Okay, so welcome back to this session on action research approach. And before that, you know, we discussed about two different approaches. That was organizational development approach and appreciative inquiry. In organizational development approach, what we do? We use social science techniques, bring about certain behavioral interventions for a planned change at three level. That is organizational level, group level, and individual level. In appreciative inquiry, adopt a different approach altogether, right? That is where we try to realize or envision the future based upon your strength, right? And then the inquiry is based upon more positive approach, and that is why we talked about the positive core, which basically relates to what you call developing a more positive image, acting more positively, right? And then based on this, we collaborate with each other to bring about a change that is envisioned for the future. Now, when we are talking about action research approach, it is entirely different. In action research approach, is a more practical and pragmatic, as I told you. So, what we are going to discuss here is that how we do, how do we go about it, and how this concept of action research has emerged in the literature. Now, if you look at this action research approach, it, it was conceptualized by Court Levin. And then it was further expanded by other behavioral scientists. So the basic theory of action research come from what you call the Kurt Levin. Basically, he worked in the area of social change, uh, and he said that yes, it is very very important if you want to bring about any kind of uh, sustainable change in the society, uh, you need to work on it based on certain principles so that the change is more effective and permanent in nature, right? He says that it all depends upon how you act, right? So the basic emphasis on this action research approach is on action. So he says that the motivation to change is related to whether you are going to act upon the change or not, right? So here the emphasis is upon the action, right? For example, if you are active, then you take decisions. If you are not acting, then you are not going to take decisions. Right. So, if people are acting, they are taking decisions, then they are definitely are going to adopt new ways, but if you are not active, then you will not be able to take decisions, then how will you go and adopt new ways of thinking, behaving and bringing about any kind of change. Right. So, he says that there, there are a set of steps that we follow when we think about bringing about a change in the organization. Right. And for that, he says that it is more social approach to bringing about a change in the organization, right? And he also suggested that there are certain steps, right? And it is again cyclical in nature. And he says that these steps include planning. First, you plan about what kind of change you want to bring. Then you act upon that, and then you see what is the result or outcome of that particular action. Right. So, it appears to be more practical in the sense suppose you want to say that okay, we need to plan about something that say you want to plan to change the structure of the organization. Right. The moment you say that you want to plan, plan about change the changing the structure of the organization, then what you do? You are going to act upon it. Right. But before you act, you should be more rational and decide how do we go about acting so that we are able to restructure the organization. Right, and then see what happens. Whether after restructuring the organization, there is significant improvement in the performance or not. Whether there is a better relationship between the people or not. What happens to the integration and the coordination among people across levels in the hierarchy and also horizontally across various departments? Whether things have improved or not. So, if it has improved, it means that you have act properly and the action the result of this action is more affirmative or positive in nature right now if you look at this action uh, research approach so where we go about plan act and then see the outcome uh, levin basically suggests uh, a model which is very common and everybody is, uh, basically understands this is uh, he talks about three different stages the first stage is known as unfreezing right the second stage is known as changing or moving and the third stage is known as rephrasing, right. 
So, the first stage is that is where you are going to plan right it means that is where you are going to unfreeze right. This unfreezing happens when you want to change the status quo to with the individual with the group or even with the organization right because you identify that there is a, there is a need for change right. So, this brings some kind of uh, say discomfort or instability to whatever you want to bring so far as the change is concerned right. For example, say you want to bring about a change in the technology of the product that you have been using right. You have certain objectives for it that why you want to bring about a change in the technology Maybe uh, you want to go for a MOS based production system to a more tailor based production system uh, and so you want to adopt a more flexible manufacturing systems right. Now, the moment you think about that is you want to move to a more advanced manufacturing systems like flexible manufacturing system which is nothing else, but you want to uh, have better control. So, that the quality of the product is better, better right and you are able to generate more profit through custom based production system right. Now, you want to bring about a change in the technology. So, the kind of technology that you are using currently and the kind of technology that you want to bring in. The moment you think about unfreezing you are faced with a dilemma whether you should go for it or not right. So, it would create some kind of discomfort in the individuals in the group who are working on that. And at the same time you also realize that yes you need to go for a change in the system and processes of producing the product and that is why you are moving to a more recent technology that is flexible manufacturing systems. So, that you can better cover, uh, cover the customers more generate more revenue better have better market share right. Now, the second phase is known as changing or moving. So, what you do? Once you are able to identify that yes, yes it is important for you to go for this kind of change. So, this requires new model of behavior. So, you need to explore what are the various technologies that is available and then you identify a particular technology that would be stable in your context. So, you explore and test it and then you try to implement it right. So, the changing phase or the moving phase is that yes you go about bringing about a change in the technology. And in the process you also need to ensure that the diagnosis that you have made is better, the process that you are going to adopt for change is good right and the behavior of the people are, is also going to change. So, that there is a less assistance. So, the maximum work is to be done at this stage because that is where you are going to implement the change. And once the change is implemented then you go for rephrasing. So, when we are talking about rephrasing what does it mean? It means that you want to see that that the new behavior is going to be embedded with the system right. Now, if you look at the example that I had given say related to the technology and you say that you want to bring about a more flexible manufacturing system in your products. So, now this flex flexible manufacturing system is embedded with, this, with the system it is a part of the organization and people have started working to produce results. It means that you have adopted the system of new technology right. So, if you look at this uh, Kurt Levin model uh, this action research model it talks about starting with unfreezing right then go about a change and then finally, rephrasing it means that the, ch the change gets institutionalized are established and become a part of the organization right. Maybe again after some time you start questioning the kind of technology that you have. So, again you start the same process whether there is a need to bring about a new, uh, a new system or the new technology then again you bring about a change and then again you rephrase it right. So, this is a more generic model which Levin has proposed and that is where you need, need to act upon it to ensure that the change is brought in and it gets institutionalized and become a part of the organization. Now, with this assumption we move further and see what actually happens in the action research approach. So, what is done right? 
what does it involve? Identifying the facts to start with and then experimenting with that, because that is what actually you do in action research. So, to start with what you do? You go for observation, what is happening currently, right. Say for example, the kind of technology that you are using, whether it is getting, giving desired results in terms of the volumes, in terms of technology, in terms of efficiency or not, right. So, you go for observations. Then at the next stage, you develop certain hypothesis that if this technology is brought, then what will happen. So, you develop certain hypothesis that if you bring a flexible manufacturing system, it would affect your production, right. So, you will be able to produce different kind of products using the same technology or the same platform this flexible manufacturing system which is going to satisfy a variety of customers. So, that is where you are going to establish a cause effect relationship right. And then you see that what kind of interventions would be required. Interventions in this is that sense that how you are going to bring about a change in the behavior of the people. So, that people are going to accept this kind of thing and they are trained and able to manage this kind of change right. So, once you have been able to develop a hypothesis that if you are going to bring about a change then what would be its outcome right. So, you need to establish a cause effect relationship. Let us take an, an another example right say from an academic institution right. So, you say that okay, if you are going to develop your R and D system right, where you are going to bring more uh, effective machines right for analysis and experimentation, then it would result in more patents, more publications from the faculty. So, publications and patents are a result of more investments in R and D right, bring uh, say, say machines. So, you say that okay, if you are going to invest more, it would result in better publications, more products or patents you can say. So, that is where you try to establish a cause and effect relationship between the two. And then in order to establish or prove this hypothesis or test this hypothesis, what you need to do is you need to invest in R and D systems. So, that it helps people to be more productive right. Then taking action, actually bringing about a change. It means that now you have decided that yes, in order to prove your hypothesis in terms of cause effect relationship, you are going to install a more convenient say system or what you call a in terms of technology a more flexible manufacturing systems or a new machine in the laboratory. right? So, this is related to action part and then once you have taken this action, the next is looking into the effect, what is the outcome right. Whether flexible manufacturing system has been able to prove its worth in terms of outcome or not, how many type of a variety of products you have been able to produce, what happens to the quality of the product right, what happens to the satisfaction of the customers with the products that you have been able to produce using the flexible manufacturing system right. So, if you find that there is a significant improvement in the revenue that you are you have been able to generate because of the variety of products which you have been able to offer the customers. So, you are able to establish a better relationship or you can say yes this has been possible because we have been able to bring about a change in the technology. So, you are able to establish a cause effect relationship right. So, this is how the action research goes about. Moving further what we are going to discuss is the process or the various characteristics. Look at the various characteristics right. So, here you focus on more on practical issues right. This means yes you are really interested in experimentation 
our observation and you go, want to go about it. Then at the next stage is iterative cycle, it means cyclical process through where you are going to plan, act and then reflect. It means that you plan the activities you want to go about in terms of change, you act on that and then see what happens, whether you are able to establish the cause effect relationship or not. For example, say when I say that you want to bring about a more flexible manufacturing system for products, right? you have brought in what is the outcome. Then the emphasis is on change, it means earlier you have been able to offer a singular product, but with FMS you are going to offer a variety of products. right? So, this is a change in your product line. Now, what is what does it requires? It requires collaborations who are practicing. So, the practitioners need to collaborate especially the employees who are going to work on this new technology and for that you also need to invest on the training and development. So, that you expect better collaboration so that they can work on the new technology. Then you generate data related to the outcome. Right? You look at the uh, variety of products that you have been able to produce using that machine right? and the revenue that have been generated and then you evaluate it. What happens? Is there a significant improvement and change? Has your market share gone up? The customer base has increased? So, these are the outcome action outcomes. right? So, if these things are achieved then you can say yes, you have been able to follow a more practical approach in dealing with the change. So, to, to bring about a more sustainable change which leads to better outcomes. right? Now, moving further if you look at the process what actually happens at different stages, you can see at the first stage in the action research process what happens? It is related to planning, second stage it is related to action and the third relates to what you call the results are the outcome phase. Right? Now, if you look at the planning phase what happens? You go for some kind of diagnosis let us take the same example of technology. So, you diagnose that the kind of technology that you have been able to use is outdated, is getting obsolete gradually and you need to bring about a change in the technology, because you have been able to offer only one product using this technology. right? So, you collect data that what is happening with this technology, how good it is. right? And based on the results of the kind of technology that you have been using in terms of customers, revenues, right, market share, you decide to go about a change. Right? And this is where you are going to unfreeze yourself. Right? So, this stage is known as unfreezing. So, from here you move to the next stage that is moving or the changing step. I, I this step actually you actually bring about uh, the change. What I mean to say here is that based upon the diagnosis that you have done you plan the action. Okay. So, you decide what are various alternative options that you have in terms of technology. So, what kind of choice you want to make in terms of the technology. So, you, you explore that look at the various technologies that is available and whether you are in a position to go about it or not that is very very important because you need resources to go about it. right? So, once you have been able to decide that okay, you want to go for this kind of technology because this technology offers certain solutions to your problems that is it can produce more variety of products right? because it is a more adaptive system compared to the earlier technology that you had where you can offer more products using the same technology, because this is more flexible manufacturing system. So, for example, say you have been producing a particular good say chairs. So, if you are using this technology you are going to produce chairs which will have the same characteristics similar features. Now, using this technology you can produce variety of chairs using the same uh, this flexible manufacturing technology and if you are going to use variety of chairs 
you will be able to better satisfy variety of customers. So, your customer base might go up right and with this hypothesis you move ahead and decide about bringing about a change in the technology. So, that you can produce a variety of products right and then actually you go for this technology you take steps. So, that this particular technology is implemented in the organization or successfully installed. What are the other steps that you require? You also bring about structural changes that is required. You also need to invest in training and development of the people, so that they can work with the new technology. So, all this becomes a part of the steps that you need to take a long breath bringing about a change in the technology. right? Okay. Then once this change is or the change has taken place you can say then you move to the next stage that is what we call the rephrasing. And in this change uh, this stage actually you want to see what kind of changes has happened in terms of what the various parameters that you use to evaluate the results. right? So, you collect data in terms of number of products or the variety of products that has been produced by you, number of customers which have increased or not, what is the satisfaction level this could be the soft data. You can also see whether it has been able to produce more revenue for the organization or not right and if you are satisfied that there is a significant improvement in this technology that you have been using and this technology and the result is more positive and then based on these parameters which you have used to evaluate it what you do? You rephrase it. Okay. Let us go for this now this is going to be a part of the system, but this is not enough you also create a feedback loop right. At this stage the first feedback loop is that whether you have been able to bring about the intended change whether the technology established whether people are trained to work with the new technology or not. So, you provide feedback then there is another feedback whether this new technology is working effectively or not. So, you provide feedback after establishing whether it is working well or not. The third feedback feedback is whether the change in the outcome is realized or not. So, you can see three feedback loops one from here one from rephrasing to moving and the third one from rephrasing to the planning stage. Because once you have institutionalized and the technology become a part of the system right it does not mean that you are not going to unfreeze it further. Maybe after some time you think that this technology is again getting obsolete and outdated and you are planning about a better technology. So, again you go for unfreezing right. So, you get constant uh, constant feedback about the kind of technology how it is working and the moment you think that it is not working well again you start planning about it right and then you move ahead. This is what the action research approach to the change age. Moving further <coughs> we are going to discuss the process for how it happens right. So, you can see that there are five different stages that have been discussed in this cycle right. So, the first stage is collecting information at the planning stage, input stage, then the sharing of the data. You share the data that how the system is working, then, then you work on this data to generate hypothesis about the cause and effect relationship. So, the first stage what actually happens you collect data right at this this is the stage. So, this is the cyclical process right depending upon the need. So, the moment you decide that yes there is a need to bring about a change of the technology the cyclical process starts. It starts collecting about the data about the current technology share this data work on it and based on this basically you plan that okay, you want to go for a new technology. And then the next stage is that you act right. Now, when we say that you are going to act it is based on the analysis that you have made about the current state that input stage. The act state actually you want to bring about a change right. 
uh, and again here again we are going to see what happens the act stage 2 the next stage what you do again you go through the same stage once you have acted i implemented the technology new technology then you collect the data about the change that is happening in terms of with the variety of products customer base market share revenue whatever parameters you have used share the data and then you compare this with this one so this will help you to realize whether there is a significant improvement or not and if it is not then you need to go about revising your plan because you find if there is no change or there is no significant improvement in the customer base though you have been able to offer a variety of products there is no change in the market share the no, no change the no change in the revenue generation then what is the point of bringing about this new technology you have invested lot of money but it is not useful right so you need to revise your plan and then act upon it so it's a cyclical process which goes on based on feedback you need to act and decide whether there is a significant improvement or not based on the change that you want to bring right and if you find that yes there is a significant improvement then you don't need to go and revise right you act upon it and go for institutionalizing that so that it becomes a part of the system right so this is the process that we have discussed now we are moving further to discuss one approach which is basically a very approach uh, 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 very useful approach and it is it is used as a tool for bringing about the change it's like a canoe okay it's a blueprint for making uh, more uh, dynamic changes in the organization so if you look at this it represents the opening phase and the body of the meeting and the closing down phase right so if you want to bring about change then how do you go about it first is the welcome stage connect to each other and task then discover where we are then get the dreams decide what to want to do act and then attend to the end so in this process when you go about planning it is very very important right so to start with you have to start by making people feel welcome so pay attention to those who are going to be a part of this right so go for a more semi circular circular arrangement so that people can see each other right first stage right and that is where you want to connect to each other so move to the next stage that is connect to each other and the task then how are going to con uh, say converse how are going to interact and relate with each other right there could be people who are strangers or not known to each other so you are going to share information about each other and you also initiate the process so th that they are able to understand and share each with each other whatever knowledge and skill they have right and this bas basically helps you to establish a better report rapport sorry with each other so if you are able to be better connect then you move to the next stage that is discover right the picture of the current situation so when you are going to plan especially what i am talking about is related to the planning activities right remember we talked about the planning activities so when you are going to engage in this planning activities for that how do you go about the process of planning activities that is what we are discussing here so uh, let people participate in the process of planning and then once they are connected with each other right the next stage what we do you are going to discover discover what discover the current situation right where you are how the technology is working right how it is going to affect the organization so this kind of discovery happens at this stage and after that you move to the next stage dreams right it also it is also related to partly you can say the appreciative inquiry that is because that is where we also talked about discover dream design and destiny the same approach can be followed in action action research approach as well where you try to elicit the dream where you are going to share a picture of where you want to go right from the kind of technology that you are using or assembly line right which can produce only one type of product you create a picture of the future where you want to say that okay we need to create a variety of products right a different kind of products using a system or technology 
right? Because that would help us to make more profits, become more competitive in the market, right? So, then you ask them and then they try to come out with where they are going to share a picture of where they want to be, right? So, look at the kind of theme that is emerging in terms of technology, what kind of technology should be desirable for the organization and whether everybody shares the same concern or everybody is thinking alike that okay, we need this kind of technology, right. Then they you move to the next stage, right. Okay. So, once you decide that you, okay, you need to act upon then who is going to do what, right. Who is going to find about the technology, who is going to train people, who is going to be in the procurement, who is going to be installment installation. So, everything is to be decide, decided, what needs to be done in terms of bringing about the technology and then who is going to do what. And finally, in the last phase what you do? You go for it, establish it right and then you see whether the decision that you have taken is correct or not. Right. So, this model this canoe has been used to see that how do we go about planning right. So, that we are we are able to act upon that to bring significant changes with better outcomes right. Now, if you look at this action research approach that we have been talking about right, how it has been used in so far as change management is concerned right. So, basically if you look at the planning stage what happens? Those who are engaged in this planning activity, they want to bring about certain changes whether it is incremental or transformational, they need to be convinced and also convince the top management that okay, we need to go about it and we need to act upon it right now otherwise it is going to be too late. right? So, they become the advocates of the new process because they are engaged in the process, they go through this process of discovery, design and dream so, to decide okay, this is what we require. So, they also feel that they are become they, they are the part of the process, right. The idea here is not to change the people, right. The idea here is to come out with the new information knowledge which would help them to resolve the problem. It is not that okay, you want to bring about the change in the people but you are going to train the people so that they can work with the new technology right so this kind of approach is being used when we are talking about the relevance of action research to the change management right now look at some of the applications if you look at most of the interventions in the area of change management right what actually happens okay so you start with fact finding taking action which is designed to improve the situation right so, most of the time you will find that this kind of approach is used in incremental changes less in what you call transformational changes because you know that this is not working. So, you act upon it bring about a change right and see whether the intended change had significant improvement on the performance of the organization or not and that is how it continues right. So, if you look at the application part of this is what we call uh, this uh, action research approach it is very much possible it is very very practical actually that is very uh, you decide about it okay, based on the information the facts that you have right you share the data with others collaborate with all the people together and then based on the feedback you explore the possibilities that what kind of things is required. The same thing can be said about the say structure. Now, you know that your structure is not efficient in terms of say coordination and integration that is required by the organization to facilitate effective performance. Now, what needs to be done in this case? You need to go for restructuring. Now, if you go for restructuring and if you have a say function based structure, now whether you should move to a product based structure, division based structure, a matrix structure or altogether become a more horizontal organization of letter system. So, there are a variety of options that is available for restructuring right. So, at the discovery stage basically at the first stage you see that what are the drawbacks of the functional structure 
why it is not working and then what kind of structure you think would better work in your organization given the context and situation in which you are working. Then you explore the possibilities and then you pin your hopes on one particular structure you think would be better and see that there is a consensus that everybody is sharing the same kind of picture related to the restructure. So, you decide okay, let us go for a matrix structure because that is how we will be able to optimize the resources and to make the organization more effective. right? Now, the moment you decide that okay, from flatter structure uh, sorry from a functional structure you move to a more matrix structure how it is going to help the organization. right? So, what you, you build upon that structure and see what happens in terms of re relationship, in terms of authority, in terms of the outcome right that you have thought of right products services whatever you are offering and see whether the relationship has improved vertically and horizontally the moment you move to a more uh, say matrix structure. So, if it has happened then you make it a part of your organization and, and announce that okay, now we are going to have a matrix structure for this organization it is going to be institutionalized and become a part of the system. Maybe after some time you realize that the system is not working. So, again you go for a change right. So, it is a cyclical process. So, act upon it plan act and then look at the result. So, it is basically based on the idea of what you call unfreezing, moving and rephrasing right. So, with this we are going to close this thank you very much. <laughs>